What's up guys, we are back with a full slate of MLB action here on Monday, May 20th. We had a solid winning day there on Sunday, guys. Things worked out pretty well for us. We had the Yankees minus one and a half. That was pretty much a no-sweat situation, although uh, the White Sox did get on the board first, but we got Baltimore minus 140. That one came through. The Phillies won pretty comfortably. That minus one and a half came through easily. Also, our pick on Toronto minus 104 that we got a little bit of trouble for down in the comments. That one came through pretty comfortably as well. We did miss on Milwaukee plus 120. They looked terrible. And while the Oakland Kansas City under looked good there for a while. It eventually didn't come through. So a 4-2 day overall. We'll definitely take that. No problem from that here. And let's just keep things rolling here. Headed into a new week with basically a full slate of games to go over. Let's find some value. First, do me a big favor and hit that like button. It's a great way to show some support for the channel and all the work we put in here every single day. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description to go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the majors sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today, and we'll give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day. It's game one of a doubleheader between the San Diego Padres and the Atlanta Braves. We see the Padres coming into this game fresh off of a win over the Braves. They won 9-1 to with Yu Darvish out there on the mound, so he looked very, very solid in that one. The Padres are up to 24-24 and on the season, so they've battled their way back to 500, and they're they're handing the ball in game one of this doubleheader on Monday to Dylan Cease, who's 5-3 and three on the season with a 2.45 ERA. He's coming off kind of a questionable start against the Rockies. Maybe he wasn't taking them seriously or something like that, but he went five and two-thirds innings, gave up five hits and three earned runs, so not great, but he did strike out eight in that game, and the start before that, he was absolutely dominant against the Cubs, giving up only one hit and striking out 12 over seven innings, so this is definitely somebody we're looking at as a big-time plus-level starting pitcher, and the Padres are hitting the ball well now. I mean, they scored nine and three runs over their last couple games, so it's nice to see the bats reawaken. On paper, this should be one of the best hitting teams in the majors. I mean, maybe not one of the best, but definitely like top six or seven, I would think, pretty easily. I mean, they're ninth in run scored despite not hitting the ball well that well lately, and they're fifth in batting average, seventh in on-base percentage. I mean, looking up and down the roster, they've got tons of guys that can absolutely mash, so this should be a pretty good offense, and they're hoping they can keep things rolling here against the Atlanta Braves, who have now lost three in a row, and are handing the ball in this one to Reynaldo Lopez, who's 2-1 and one with a 1.34 ERA, so he's been looking great lately. I mean, he shut down the Cubs over five innings, gave only two hits and no runs. The game before that, he had a little bit of trouble against the Red Sox. I mean, he went five and a third, six hits, two runs. Only one of them was earned, though. He did walk four in that game, which is a little bit concerning, but over the course of the season, he's kept those numbers very, very low, and he's looked pretty good out there, although he's not going super deep into games. So we have some reservations here about Reynaldo Lopez, and we definitely have some reservations about the Braves' offense, which over their last three games has scored exactly one, one, and one run. So one, well, one run average over their last three games, not exactly great. This team, after getting off to an insanely hot start at the plate, is all the way down to 17th in the majors in runs scored. That's not great. They're 6th in on-base percentage still and 7th in batting average, but they are not getting runs across the plate and they are not swinging hot bats right now, guys. I mean, things have looked very, very dark for them in this series and they're about to go up against a very, very solid pitcher, so that's a little bit concerning for me. Guys, looking at the numbers in this game, we see that the Padres are plus 110, the Braves are minus 120, and we've got an over-under in this one of 8.5. Now, we're talking about game 1 of this series for sure. Now, looking at the numbers, we do see that Atlanta's a very good home team, but that hasn't really been coming to bear in this series series, and San Diego's a decent road team. They're 12-8 and eight on the road, and we see the Padres at plus 110. I kind of think they have the advantage here in terms of putting a better starter out there on the mound, so this is very likely to end up as a pin comment play, guys. Give me the San Diego Padres plus 110 in, in game one of their doubleheader. Next on the docket, guys, we're going to the Chicago White Sox going on the road to take on the Toronto Blue Jays. The White Sox come to this game fresh off of getting swept by the Yankees. They didn't keep any of those games particularly close. They're down to 14-33 and 33 on the season, and handing the ball in this game to Eric Feedy. He's off to a 4 and start with a 2.60 ERA. Incredibly impressive to be 4-0 and when you're pitching for a team like the White Sox. His last time out, he was dominant against the Nationals. Start before that, he was dominant against the Cleveland Guardians. He's given up exactly zero runs over his last 13 innings of work, spanning his last two starts. Dominant stuff out there. He struck out nine over those two starts combined, so he's looked good 
very, very good. No way around that. The guy's been absolutely lights out this season. Did have kind of a questionable start against the uh, St. Louis Cardinals a few days ago, or not a few days ago, a couple weeks ago, actually. So I guess we'll take that slightly into account. But right now, he comes into this game throwing the ball great. The offense, however, is looking terrible. Over their last three games, over that series against the Yankees, they didn't score more than two runs in any individual game, and they continue to be the worst offense in baseball, guys. There's just no way around it. We're not going to waste a bunch of time talking about the Chicago White Sox offense. They are a terrible, terrible offensive team. They suck at the plate. They're going to need to score some runs here going up against the Toronto Blue Jays, who just scored a 5-2 win over the Tampa Bay Rays for us. We'll definitely take that, put it on the board. The Blue Jays are handing the ball in this game to Jose Barrios, who's off to a 4-3 and three start with a 2.82 ERA, and coming off a very manageable start against the Baltimore Orioles. Obviously a great hitting team. He needed to bounce back and have a good start in that one because he got shelled uh, by the Phillies back on the 7th. So definitely nice to see him bounce back. He went 7 innings, gave only 2 earned runs. He did give up two home runs in the game, so that's not great. But against the Orioles, that's also not terrible. So we'll definitely take that. The problem for the Blue Jays in general has been their offense. They come into this game fresh off of scoring five runs, though, so they'll definitely take that. We see Vladimir Guerrero's batting average continue to climb, so that's a positive trend. But this team just hasn't been putting up a lot of runs, guys. They're 29th in the majors and runs scored, 20th on base percentage. I do expect this offense to get a little bit better over the course of the season, but I'm not super high on them right now and not really super high on them necessarily in this game. And looking at the numbers for this one, we see the White Sox are plus 170 with Eric Feedy out there on the mound. That's pretty enticing. Maybe thinking about putting some money on the White Sox in this game. We see the Blue Jays are minus 190. That's way too high of a number, even with their bats starting to round into form a little bit. I'm not excited about that. But we have an over-under of eight in this game. Both these teams are showing pretty significant trends to the under. We see the White Sox are now 26, 20, and 1 to the under, and Toronto is 27 and 18 to the under. We like both starting pitchers that are going out there in this game, guys. We dislike both offenses, so go ahead and give me a shot of the under in this one. I'm not positive this is going to make it into our pin combat play, but under 8 seems pretty reasonable to me in this one. I don't think we're going to see a lot of runs scored. Next up, guys, we're with the New York Mets going on the road to take on the Cleveland Guardians. The Mets come into this game fresh off of a 7-3 win over the Marlins there on Sunday. They need Needed that one. They had been really struggling lately, and they're still not out of the doghouse at 21 and 25 on the season. They're handing the ball in this game to Tyler Megill. He's off to an 0-1 start with a 2.25 ERA, and he's coming off the 15-day IL back from a shoulder issue. So he's only going to be making his second start of the season. He looked kind of mediocre against the Milwaukee Brewers back on the 31st of March. So obviously not uh, not not somebody who's gotten a lot of work in this season. So he's basically starting his season over at this point and he didn't look great in his one start and he's going up against a uh, pretty solid offense so probably not an ideal spot to start your season over I wouldn't think and yeah his uh, offense hasn't been looking great behind him although over the last couple days they've come alive for nine and seven runs so they'll definitely take that but this team is still only 20th in the majors in offensive production in terms of runs scored and yeah they're 17th and on base percentage 23rd in slugging percentage like nobody's off to a particularly good start swing the bats for them and yeah not a lot of positives I mean they did look really good here in game three of their series against the Marlins but that was to avoid a sweep like this has not been a good offensive team this season in general and they're going to need to score some runs here going up against the Guardians who come into this one fresh off of a sweep of the Minnesota Twins they won game three there five to two and they're handing the ball in this game to Ben Lively who's two and two on the season with a 3.06 ERA so very respectable there he's coming off of not his best start though and he's had a little bit of trouble his last two times out I mean he gave up three earned runs over eight hits on five and two-thirds innings of work against the Chicago White Sox and then his last time out back on the 14th against the Texas Rangers he went five innings gave up three earned runs on five hits so just not the most dominant stuff I mean he got homered off of three times by the Rangers like definitely making some mistakes out there so we're a little bit concerned about that but we're not concerned about the Cleveland Guardians offense guys in their series against the Twins they scored three 11 and five runs that will definitely work we still don't see Quan back although it seems like that return is getting um you know relatively close I mean he's taking batting practice and stuff like that and you know that's always a good sign moving you know into him actually being out there but he still has a way to, ways to go but this team has maintained pretty well I mean they're fifth in the majors and run scored still 17th in batting average and 13th in on base percentage so not where their numbers were with Quan in there for sure but they'll definitely take it I mean they've won six out of the last seven games this team is cruising along and the odds makers like them a good amount in this game guys we see the Guardians at minus 122 the Mets at plus 108 and we've got an over under in this game of eight and a half we actually see both teams showing very slight trends to the over but we're not really interested in that we're more interested in the guardians minus 122 against a cleveland mets team that's putting a very questionable starter out there on the mound 
kind of making a de facto first start of the season again. So looking at Cleveland being 15 and 6 at home is definitely nice. Give me the Guardians minus 122. I don't have a ton of faith here in Ben Lively, so I think this is uh, slightly unlikely to make it into our pin comment plays, but we like them a decent amount. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at game two of the doubleheader between the San Diego Padres and the Atlanta Braves. We see the Padres are slated to hand the ball on this one to Randy Vasquez, who's 0-2 on the season with a 6.32 ERA, and he's not coming off a very good start, guys. He got shelled by the Colorado Rockies his last time out. He did have a decent start in here against the Chicago Cubs, but yeah, not a ton of faith for me here in this guy. I mean, he's gotten shelled by the Rockies twice. He had a bad start against the light-hitting Toronto Blue Jays. Like, things haven't looked great for him, and... Yeah, not super high on him. I am feeling good about the Padres' bats to come alive a little bit, but we see the Braves are running Chris Sale out there in Game 2 of this one, and he's looked very, very good this season. He's 6-1 with a 2.54 ERA, and his last time out against the Cubs, he gave up only two hits on seven innings. He struck out nine in that game, gave up no runs. The start before that against the Red Sox, he struck out 10. The start before that against the Seattle Mariners, he struck out nine. He's allowed one run over his last three starts, spanning 18 innings of work. Yeah. Not somebody you're excited to see if you're a hitter going up there. So looking at the numbers for this game, we're obviously not going to dive back into discussing both teams' offenses. We already talked about that in the first pick of the day, uh, talking about game one of this little doubleheader here. But we're going to be looking at the Braves minus 210. It's a little bit steep. I'm not quite excited about this enough to take the uh, take them against the run line. We'll go ahead and just take them on the money line here, minus 210. I think they're in a pretty good spot. They are 15 and 6 at home. While they haven't been hitting the ball great, I definitely think with Sale out there on the mound, they're going to find a way to get things done in game two of this here doubleheader. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at the Milwaukee Brewers going on the road to take on the Miami Marlins. Pretty unhappy with the Brewers. They couldn't come through for us there in game three of their series against the Houston Astros. It wasn't even particularly close. They lost nine to four, so that was pretty disappointing, but they're 27 and 19 on the season and hitting the ball in this one to Joe Ross, who's two and four with a 4.61 ERA. He's coming off a good start against the Pirates. Not a dominant start, though. I mean, he did give up two earned runs over five innings but he only gave up two hits. He did give up a home run, though. So six strikeouts in that one. Definitely a plus start from him, who this guy hasn't been amazing this season in general. Just saying, I mean, he got shelled by the uh, Kansas City Royals for three runs. Maybe not shelled, but definitely beaten up a little bit. He got shelled by the Yankees back on the 27th of the last month. So I'm not super high on this guy, but he hasn't been terrible. He's thrown the ball a little bit better lately. And the Brewers' offense has been very good all season long, but they had a little bit of a hiccup against the Houston Astros. Guys, they scored four, four, and four runs against the Astros like and lost two of those games didn't look amazing I mean four runs in a game isn't awful but yeah this offense definitely seems like it's not swinging the hottest bats right now so maybe they're due for a little bit of a breakout performance we'll have to see here how they do going up against the Marlins who kind of are uh, generally a great team to have some breakout offensive days against the Marlins are 15 and 33 on the season coming to this one fresh off a loss against the Mets but that loss snapped a four game winning streak so we'll see how many four game winning streaks the Marlins have I don't think it's going to be a ton they're handing the ball in this game to Ryan Weathers who's four and two and four with a three point 8-1 ERA, but he comes into this game fresh off a dominant start against the Detroit Tigers. He went eight innings, gave up three hits and no runs while striking out four. He actually had a fairly serviceable start before that against the Dodgers, but he hasn't looked amazing all season long, guys. I mean, he got shelled by the Oakland A's, or at least knocked around a little bit. He got shelled for real by the Washington Nationals, and yeah, this guy's decent. He's a young guy. He's coming up, but he's going to be a little bit inconsistent for sure. So it'll be interesting to see which side of consistency that he's on in this game. And the Marlins offense has been a little bit better lately, but I don't look at this as a plus offensive team. I mean, they're second to last in the majors and on base percentage, third to last in slugging percentage. Like this is not a great offensive team. I don't care that they've scored three, 10, eight, two, and one runs over their last few games. Like not a great offensive team. And looking at the numbers for this one, we actually see the odds makers are giving the Marlins a decent amount of love. They've got a lot of faith here in Ryan Weathers. But man, the Brewers are minus 130. The Marlins are plus 116. We've got an over under of eight in this game. And to be honest, I'm a little bit interested in the over. We see both teams showing trend, significant trends to the over. These are the two best over teams in the majors this season. Milwaukee is 28, 17 and one to the over. We see Miami is 29 and 19 to the over. We're going to go ahead and take the over in this game, guys. I also trend, I also tend to look a little bit towards the Brewers, but go ahead and give me the over in this one. I think we'll see plenty of offense in this game. This has a decent chance. This over pick has a decent chance to make it into the pin comment. Next up, guys, we're the Minnesota Twins going on the road to take on the Washington Nationals. The Twins come into this game. They are having a real rough time, guys. They've now lost six straight games. They got swept by the Yankees and then followed that up by getting swept by the Cleveland Guardians. 
Not a great feeling. I mean, they're hoping they can get back on track. They are 24 and 22 on the season, handing the ball in this game to Pablo Lopez, who's four and three on the year with a 3.93 ERA. But yeah, his last time out didn't look great against the Yankees. It was the Yankees, so we'll cut him some slack here, but he gave up 10 hits and three earned runs over six and a third innings of work. He did strike out three and didn't walk anybody, but yeah, not a lot of positives to be found in that game. And while he's been very solid this season in general, I mean, he has had his problems and he's going to be taking on a pretty interesting opponent in this one, so we'll see what he actually does out there. The Twins' offense has been a huge problem for them during this streak, though, guys. They scored 2 4 2 0 0 and 1 runs over this six game losing streak. Like, it's been absolutely terrible. This team is not that bad at the plate, they're not an elite hitting team. Like, don't get me wrong. I think if they make it to league average in terms of like offense, offensive production overall, I think they should be pretty happy. They are 13th in run score, but man, they are. They're not having a great time right now, guys. These, this is a team swinging some of the coldest bats in the league. At least that's what it feels like to me. And they're going up against the Washington Nationals, who are 20 and 25 on the season after getting swept by the Phillies. They also lost two out of three to the White Sox before that. So they've actually lost five in a row. So we've got two of the coldest teams in the majors going up against each other in this series. The Nationals are handing the ball in this game to Mitchell Parker, who's 2-2 two and two on the year with a 3.09 ERA. He's coming off a middle-of-the-road start against the White Sox. I mean, you're giving up three earned runs and a home run over five innings to the White Sox. I'm not going to get excited about that. He did have a decent start against the Baltimore Orioles back on the 8th, so the guy has had some positives for sure this year. I mean, he had a shutout, a seven-inning shutout, giving up only three hits against the Houston Astros, but that's basically a month ago now, so not exactly going to freak out about having him on the mound, but he's also not terrible, and looking at the Nationals' bats, they haven't been great. They've scored five, three, two, zero, and zero runs over this losing streak, so they're a little bit due for something of a breakout, but there's a reason this squad is 28th in the majors and runs scored, and 29th in slugging percentage, like just not a very good offensive team, guys. And the odds makers, they think the Twins have a very good chance of snapping that losing streak in this game. They got Minnesota at minus 159 on the road in this game, and the Nationals at plus 154. We see over unders of eight and a half or eight. They're both numbers floating around out there, so you could get either one that you want. But in this game, guys, I'm kind of not super interested in the over under or the side too much. I mean, if you're forcing me to bet this game, I think we do see the Twins finally snap that losing streak. I mean, minus 159 is and super appealing, but we do see Washington is only 7 and 10 at home, so I guess go ahead and give me the Twins, minus 159 is a small lean, but yeah, this is not going in the pin comment. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Boston Red Sox going on the road to take on the Tampa Bay Rays. The Red Sox come into this game fresh off of a series salvaging win against the Cardinals. They won 11-3 in Game 3 that series to avoid the sweep and to avoid losing their fifth straight game. The Red Sox are down to 23-24 and on the season, and they're going to be handing the ball in this game to Tanner Houck, who's off to a 3-5 and start of his year with a 2.17 ERA. He's coming off a... Interesting start, I guess we'll say, against the Tampa Bay Rays. He went five and two thirds innings, gave up three runs, but only one of them was earned. He walked three and struck out seven, so not a terrible outing, but not elite. And he's given up at least three runs, or even he gave up four runs against Minnesota, then three runs against Washington, then three runs against the Tampa Bay Rays. So he has not been looking as good recently as he did early in the season. And the Red Sox, they need their starting pitching to look pretty good. I mean, sure, they did score 11 runs in that last game, but overall, this has not been a great offense offensive team. I mean, they're hovering around league average in a lot of the major statistical categories, but it just hasn't really felt like that to me lately. They don't have anybody hitting the ball particularly well. We do see Tyler O'Neill up to 11 home runs now, but we're not exactly going to write home about that. And they did score 11 runs in their last game of their series against the Cardinals. So I guess they could be technically counted as swinging hot bats, but one game does not a hot streak make, in my opinion. And they're going to need to play well here against the Tampa Bay Rays, who just won two out of three against the Toronto Blue Jays and had won three out of four in the series before that, which was a against these very Boston Red Sox. This series is going to be taking place in Tampa Bay, so that's a pretty big advantage for them. And yeah, the, the Rays are handing the ball in this one to Tosh Bradley, who's 1-1 one one with a 2.45 ERA this season. He's only going to be making his third start of the year, but he already has a very solid start against the Boston Red Sox under his belt. It was his last time out back on the 15th. He went five innings, two earned runs, only four hits while striking out six and walking one. That definitely qualifies as a solid start to me, guys, and we've seen the Tampa Bay Rays offense. They looked pretty dang good in that series against the Red Sox, guys. They scored seven, four, four, and five runs over that four-game series, and they're 
They did pretty well against the Toronto Blue Jays. We see this team is up to 15th in the majors in runs scored. They're 10th in on-base percentage, so definitely trending in the right direction. 13th in batting average, and this is definitely a team on the rise overall. So, guys, looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Red Sox at minus 106, the Tampa Bay Rays at minus 105. We've got over-unders of 8 or 7.5. Not interested in the over-under, guys, but I am very interested in the Tampa Bay Rays minus 105 in this game. Seems like an extremely reasonable price. I have a good amount of faith here in Taj Bradley, his second time going against the Boston Red Sox. Not a lot of faith in how Hauk is looking right now, so go ahead and give me the Tampa Bay Rays at home where they're 14 and 12 on the season. I think they're in a great spot to win this game. Next on the docket, guys, we've got the Seattle Mariners going on the road to take on the New York Yankees. The Mariners come into this game fresh off of a loss to the Baltimore Orioles. They lost in game three of that series, six to three. We had the Orioles in that one, so we'll definitely take it. They actually lost two out of three in that series, and they're down to 25 and 22 on the season. And with the Houston Astros looking so much better lately, that uh, that lead in the AL West probably doesn't feel very safe at all. They're handing the ball in this game to Logan Gilbert, who comes into this game three and two on the year with a 3.07 ERA. But his last two starts have been big departures from how this guy looked early in the season. He gave up four hits, three earned runs, and a home run over six and two-thirds innings against the Kansas City Royals, so not exactly the strongest hitting team. And his start before that, he got absolutely obliterated by the Minnesota Twins, guys. He only lasted four innings in that start, gave up nine hits and eight earned runs. Yeah, not, not as typical. He's been pretty good this season in general, but he hasn't looked super, super good here lately. And yeah, he's going to probably need to pitch pretty well against the New York Yankees, one of the best hitting teams in the majors. But the Mariners' offense has not been great, obviously. That's kind of the story of this team. Great pitching, not much offense. They scored three, four, and two runs in the series against Baltimore, so you can see why they didn't have a ton of success there. They're 26th in the majors in terms of runs scored. Not great. 25th in on-base percentage. Like, this is just not a great hitting team, guys. There's no question, no, uh, no secrets there. Everybody knows the Mariners not the best hitting team, and they're going to have to score some runs here going up against the New York. Yankees guys because this team is gonna score some runs they've now won seven in a row sweeping the twins and then sweeping the Chicago White Sox they won seven to two in the last game of that series thank you Yankees for coming through and covering that one and a half they're handing the ball in this one to Marcus Stroman who's three and two on the year with a 3.33 ERA and coming into this one fresh off of a great start against the Minnesota Twins guys he went six innings gave up two hits no runs Three walks, which is a little bit concerning. This guy's got some control issues for sure and two strikeouts. I mean, he's walked three, two, five, five, and one over his last five starts. So he's going to give you some free passes out there, but he's got pretty good stuff. And, man, he's been uh, he's been throwing the ball. I mean, he bounced back from a bad start against Houston, but in general, he's been throwing the ball well for sure. And, man, if you pitch even decent for the Yankees, you're in a great spot because this team is absolutely crushing the ball right now. I see Juan Soto hitting the ball great. Aaron Judge is killing it right now. He's up to 13 home runs. And, yeah, this team just absolutely killing it right now. Right now, 26 in the majors in runs scored, third in slugging percentage. They're second in the majors and on base percentage. Like this team can absolutely destroy the baseball, and that's just what they've been doing lately. And looking at the numbers for this game, we see the odds makers. They're giving Logan Gilbert some respect here. They've got the Yankees at only minus 129, the Mariners at plus 114. We've got over unders of eight or seven and a half floating around out there. We do see Seattle is only 10 and 12 on the road and the Yankees are 16 and six at home and you can get them at only minus 129. I think the odds of Stroman having a good start against a team like Seattle at the plate are pretty high. So guys, go ahead and give me the Yankees in this one. No need to take them against the run line. We can just take them at minus 129. And yeah, I think they get the win in this game. I think they're going to find a way to get some offense, maybe not a ton against Gilbert, but he hasn't been looking great lately. So definitely give me the Yankees in this one. It's a little sketchy betting on a team to win their eighth straight game, but I think they're in a very good spot in this one. Next on the docket, guys, we're going to the Detroit Tigers going on the road to take on the Kansas City Royals. The Tigers come into this game fresh off of a loss to the Arizona Diamondbacks, but they did win two out of three in that series. They're 23 and 23 on the season. They're handing the ball in this one to Reese Olsen, who's 0-4, but with a 2.09 ERA. This poor guy can't get a win on the board. His last time out, he looked amazing against the Marlins, guys. He went eight innings, gave up three hits, no runs, and struck out six in a game that he saw his team lose one to nothing in the 10th inning. Like... That cannot feel great. That's pretty tough look, guys. I mean, over his last several starts, he's only allowed a total of four earned runs over his last five starts combined, and that includes starts against the Yankees and the Cleveland Guardians. Like, this guy has been absolutely dealing out there. He just can't get 
any run support whatsoever. It's crazy. He's definitely hoping he can get some offense, but his offense hasn't been great this season, but they've been much better lately. They scored 13, 8, and 4 runs in their series against the Diamondbacks, so that's a step in the right direction for this team. They're up to 21st in the majors and runs scored. That's a kind of big jump for them. They're 23rd in on-base percentage, though, 21st in slugging percentage, so not the best hitting team. We don't see anybody really killing the ball for them. I mean, Riley Green has nine home runs and is batting 249, and it kind of is starting to look like he's the best hitter on the roster for them right now. Like, that's not exactly where you want your offense to be, guys. They're going to need to score some runs here going up against the Kansas City Royals, who just swept the Oakland A's. They won 8-4, to 5-3, to three, and 6-2, to two, and they're now up to 29-19 and 19 on the season. Sticking right there with Cleveland in the AL Central, and they're handing the ball in this game to Michael Walker, who's 3-4 and four with a 4.71 ERA. He's coming off a great start against the Seattle Mariners, where he went six innings, gave up only a single earned run on three hits. He struck out seven and walked two, so definitely got some things under control after that game where he walked five against the Angels. But just in general, Waka is looking much better here as the season goes on. I mean, he's looked better over his last two starts. He did have a couple of doozies there against the Tigers and against the Texas Rangers. So he's he's got his work cut out for him here going up against a team that's already hit him hard once this season. So we'll see what actually comes down in this game. We've got the Tigers plus 100 in this one, the Royals at minus 110, and they've been very good at home. We also see over-unders of 8.5 or 9 floating around out there. And, man, under 9 looks a little bit, uh, a little bit, like nice but guys in general in this game we're going to go with the history we're going with the Detroit Tigers plus 100 in this one Reese Olsen has been absolutely lights out this season and he's got a very solid start against the Royals under his belt already where he gave up only a single earned run over seven innings of work give me the Tigers in this one to find a way to put up some offense here against Waka who has definitely looked gettable this season Next up, guys, we're looking at the Baltimore Orioles going on the road to take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Guys, this is a game we're actually going to physically be at. We're making the trip. We're going to watch this one in person. Going to be interesting to see how it goes. We're definitely going to have a little bit of coin on it ourselves. Looking at the matchup in this one, guys, we see the Orioles are coming in this game fresh off of a series win against the Seattle Mariners. They won the last game of that series 6-3, to three, and they're handing the ball in this one to Dean Kremer, who's 3-3 three and three on the season with a 3.72 ERA. And his last time out, though, didn't look amazing. He gave up six runs. Three of them were earned to the Arizona Diamondbacks. He went five and two-thirds innings. He struck out 10 in that game, so he's definitely got good stuff and probably doesn't feel bad going up against a Cardinals offense that obviously has not been great. And the Orioles offense has been very, very good against one of the best pitching teams in the majors. They scored six three and nine runs respectively over the course of that series so that's not bad at all we see Gunnar Henderson off up to 15 home runs on the season and the dude's hitting all these home runs he's still batting 270 like very impressive stuff they're eighth in the majors and runs scored first in the majors and slugging percentage 11th in batting average but they might have their work cut out for them here going up against the Cardinals and Sonny Gray the Cardinals coming to this game they just won two out of three against the Boston Red Sox they lost the last game of that series 11 to three though that's not great but they weren't really putting one of their better starters out there on the mound that's for sure they are 20 and 26 in the season they've been playing a bit better here lately but this could be a tough series for them guys they're handing the ball to Sonny Gray though which has to feel good he's 5 and 2 with a 3.05 ERA unfortunately his last time out though guys he got shelled by the Angels he went six innings gave up eight hits five earned runs he did strike out nine but man giving up a lot of runs there and a lot of hits so didn't exactly look too hot in that game and we're gonna have kind of a hard time backing him in this one after that makes two bad starts in a row and a lot of his better starts have been against not the best teams like cool you went seven innings gave it three hits against the Chicago White Sox but not gonna freak out about that and it's kind of even hard to take that into account when you're about to go up against the Baltimore Orioles so he's gonna need some run support and that's been hard to come by for the Cardinals offense over the course of the season but not not so much lately, guys. I mean, they scored 3, 7, 10, 2, 7, and 10 runs over their last few games. Like, not awful, not super consistent, but much better. I mean, things are looking up for this team that's had a really hard time lately. And yeah, guys, we actually see the odds makers giving them a good amount of respect here. They've actually had the Cardinals at minus 108 and the Orioles at plus 100. Guys, it feels tough to be going to a Cardinals game in St. Louis and to be betting on the Baltimore Orioles. So we're going to go ahead and slide aside with the Cardinals as a very slight lean in this one, hoping that Sonny Gray can bounce back. But guys, we're not going to be putting a ton on this one. This is just for a little bit of enjoyment and just because we're going to the game. But I'm leaning slightly towards the Cardinals, but it doesn't feel great. I mean, we see Baltimore is 12-5 and five on the road. That's very solid. The Cardinals are only 8-12 and 12 at home. So 
We're going to go ahead and put a little taste there on the St. Louis Cardinals, but I'm not going to be advising you guys to be betting on the Cardinals yourselves unless you happen to be going to the game, in which case if you see me, say hi. But yeah, not a big fan of this game. In general, I'm just going to be staying away. I don't know what to expect from Sonny Gray in this one. So yeah, kind of a stay away from me with a slight lean towards the Cardinals because I'm going to be going to the game. Next on the docket, guys, we've got the LA Angels going on the road to take on the Houston Astros. The Angels come into this game fresh off of winning two out of three against the Texas Rangers, so probably pretty happy about that. They're only 18 and 29 on the season, though. Not great. They're handing the ball in this one to Reed Detmers, who's three and four overall this year with a 5.19 ERA, and not coming off the best start, guys. He got shelled by the St. Louis Cardinals of all teams. Not the best offense out there. Five innings, eight hits, five runs, four of them were earned not a plus outing and yeah he's given up five six seven five and four runs over his last five starts not great not feeling very good about detmers being out there on the mound and yeah the angels probably aren't either but their offense has looked a little bit better lately they've scored four two nine and seven runs over their last four games so that's slightly better but this is not going to be an elite offensive team without mike trout guys they think they're going to hover kind of around league average maybe a little bit below and yeah, we see them down to 18th and on-base percentage, just barely over 300 in terms of on-base percentage, and nobody's particularly hitting the ball great for them right now, so not freaking about out about how the Angels look right now, and they're going up against a very good team in the Houston Astros, who are up to 21-26 and 26 on the season. They just won two out of three against the Milwaukee Brewers. They've been looking just fantastic lately, guys. I mean, this team is charging up the standings in the AL West, and they're handing the ball in this game to Framler Valdez, who's 3-1 and one with a 2.95 ERA. He's looking very good right now. He went seven innings and gave up two hits against the Oakland A's his last time out. He gave up no runs in that game. The start before that, he looked good against the Tigers. The start before that, he did get banged around by the Seattle Mariners, but just in general, this guy's looked very, very good this season, and the Houston Astros offense has looked much better lately. They've scored nine, two, five, eight, three, and two runs over the last few games, and they're definitely hitting the ball a lot better. We're seeing those offensive numbers move up to where we expected them to be. Their on-base percentage as a team has been high all season long, and their batting average has also been high. They're first in the majors now in batting average guys. They're hitting 262 as a team. Team on base percentage is 327. 12th in the majors and run score with 207. Like this offense is definitely heading places right now. And looking at the numbers for this game, we see they're getting a lot of respect from the odds makers. We see the Astros are minus 195 in this game, which seems pretty expensive. But if you take them minus one and a half, you can get them plus 105. So that seems a little bit appealing. We have an over under in this game of eight and a half. We don't care about that, guys. Definitely looking at the Astros minus one and a half in this game. You get them at a very good price, and I have no faith here in Reed Detmers, so... Yeah, go ahead and give me the Astros. I think they get a very comfortable win in this game. Last but not least, guys, we're the Arizona Diamondbacks going on the road to take on the LA Dodgers. The Diamondbacks come into this game fresh out of winning 6-4 to four against the Detroit Tigers in their last game of that series, but they lost the first two, so that probably doesn't feel great. They're 22-25 and 25 on the season, so that's also not ideal. Hitting the ball in this game to Slade Ciccone probably doesn't feel amazing either. I mean, he's 1-3 and three with a 5.27 ERA and got dominated by the Cincinnati Reds his last time out. He gave up six earned runs and five and two-thirds and that was not at the Great American Ballpark or anything like that. So things not looking amazing for him this season. I mean, he's had some spot, some decent spot starts, you know, like every so often he'll go out there and give up only one run over six innings, but he's been getting knocked around a lot. I mean, he got shelled by the San Diego Padres and yeah, just not having a great time. Not the kind of guy you're happy to run out there against the Dodgers, I don't think. And the Diamondbacks offense also hasn't been looking amazing. I mean, they scored six, three, and zero runs against the Detroit Tigers in their series against the Reds. They also weren't swinging the hottest bats. So this offense has been good this season but they're definitely not trending in a positive direction right now and they're going to need to score some runs here going up against the Dodgers who come into this game at 32 and 17 they just won three out of four against the Reds they did only win three to two in the last game of that series which is a little bit concerning but this offense is definitely nothing to be uh, scoffed at. They're hitting the ball in this game to Gavin Stone, who's 4-1 and with a 3.27 ERA. And his last time out, he looked very good against the San Francisco Giants. He went six innings, gave up five hits, but only a single earned run. He's only given up a single earned run over each of his last four starts, and he's gone at least six innings deep into each one of those starts. And yeah, one of those starts is against the Atlanta Braves. Like, So he's faced some decent offenses, and he's just looking lights out right now. And the Dodgers' offense is very, very good. Maybe they haven't been looking amazing over the last like game or two but guys they're first in the majors in runs scored with 250 runs scored like they're second in batting average first in on base percentage second in slugging percentage like this is an insane offense an absolutely insane offense and there's no reason that we shouldn't be backing them in this game i mean we see the dodgers at minus 225 we see over under eight and a half the diamondbacks are plus 195 definitely not interested in that we are however interested in the dodgers against the run line if you take the dodgers minus one and a half you can get them at like one 
minus 115. And that's what we're going to be going with for this one, guys. Definitely give me the Dodgers in this spot. I don't know if this is going to end up in my pin comment, although I think it has a pretty solid chance, to be honest. I mean, the Dodgers have just been so dominant, and I do not like what I'm seeing from Ciccone in this one. So it kind of seems like a no-brainer to throw this one on the board. So yeah, I think it's definitely worth a look. But that's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out StumpTheSpread.com, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.